What if I tell you that this creature was procedurally generated using just a Nycosphere? Unfortunately, Blender does not have any magic sliders yet. So how did I make this? That is what I summarized for you in this video in just under 8 minutes. With a simple plane for ground, I first created an Nycosphere, which I then modified into the basic shape of a slug. Now that I had a shape, the next on the list was to block out a movement pattern. And for that, I chose a wave modifier, because I wanted the movement of the slug to look like, well, a slug. I isolated the effect to x-axis, because that's the direction I wanted the creature to move when I animated. I played around with the parameters until I found the right values for its behavior. With the speed all set, I didn't like how the animation affected the entire mesh, and I didn't want the base of the slug to move. For that, I created a vertex group, named it base, and used it as a mask for the modifier. This made sure that the bottom part of the slug was always on the ground, giving it that signature creeping look. I now defined the origin point of the waves using an empty as its start position, and parented the empty to the body of the slug so it does not get left behind when I animate the body. For the foot of the slug, I modified a simple plane into the shape of an oval and gave it a wave modifier. Once I was happy with the animation, I gave it a solidify modifier for thickness. And now, the madness unfolds. Geometry nodes. I'm just kidding, it's actually quite simple. I distributed some points on the slug's body using a distribute points on face node. Then made another vertex group as a selection mask for where I wanted the points to appear. Once I was happy with the point density, I used an instance on points node with UV spheres as the instancing object. After roughly resizing the spheres to a decent radius, I added a scale instance node to animate the scale of each instance individually. I then took a noise texture and used it as a mask to randomize the size of each instance. I also added a map range node to increase the contrast. To make the movement of the slug look more random and organic, I added a displacement modifier set to global. With the basic shape and animation in place, I merged all the different pieces into one mesh using the remesh modifier. And since remesh does not work on instances, I added a realize instance node. I had to play with the values a bit to get the look that I wanted. To get there, I also had to add a subdivision modifier. To connect the foot of the slug to the main body, I took an object info node, selected the foot's mesh and connected it using a joint geometry node. But that alone did not make the foot move with the rest of the body. For that to happen, I parented the foot to the main body using a simple parent command. And with that, everything moved together. The bubbles were cluttering the base, so I took out some of the vertices from the vertex group to make the mass smaller. And it looked much better. I used a transform node to push the bubbles down a bit, so they don't stand out so much like helium balloons. Now that the creature was done, it was time to animate it. Usually, if the animation is not too complex, I like to add the camera first and then try to animate both the subject and the camera simultaneously to judge both look and pacing of the shot together. I decided to have three cuts in the scene, covering various angles highlighting different parts of the slug. One of the prominent features of slugs and snail is the trail of slime that they leave behind. This was non-negotiable. This effect was easily achievable with Blender's remarkable paint effects tool. I used the ground as a canvas and the slug as a brush in order to achieve the trail. I found this awesome trick from Uniblend to blur the paint strokes using geometry nodes, saving my GPU from having to render thousands of polygons. I then baked the paint effects and added a material to make the trail look like a slime. To achieve this, I ran a noise texture through the roughness and alpha channels. This gave me the ability to make the slime look like a thick and patchy liquid that pools up into small clusters as semi-viscous liquids tend to do. I kept the same base color for both the slime and the flow material to blend the effects seamlessly. I then used a mapping node to stretch out the noise texture in y-axis, giving it a smudged look. All that was left now was to raise the liquid patches to seal the deal. To do that, I ran the same noise texture through a color ramp and a math node and connected it to the height input of a bump map. I did not like the straight path in which the subject was moving, 
So I created a Bezier curve and linked the character to that using a curve modifier. This obviously affected the camera angles, so I readjusted them to accommodate to the animation changes. All that was left now was the materials. Or so I thought. That is until I was ambushed by a famous phenomenon called I looked at my work the next day and it looks like shit. Language. So it's back to the drawing board. I disconnected all of my geometry nodes and started all over again. This time I used the extrude nodes to extrude each face separately. I made sure that the effect is confined to the upper part of the body. To do that, I used the existing vertex group as a mask. I used a scale elements node to taper the extruded mesh towards the top. I then added a subdivide mesh node to increase the number of bumps on the body. To animate the offset of the extruded faces, I plugged it into a noise texture, a similar setup that I used for the bubbles effect. I played around with the noise values for a good while until I was satisfied with the animation of the bumps. I wanted them to feel like air sacs on a frog, but these bubbles were triangular in shape because the icosphere is a triangulated mesh. So I added a dual mesh node to turn them into a more circular looking shape. And then with some final tweaks to the sole of the slug, I reworked the camera angles. This time I chose to do a single crane dolly shot and added a noise to the anim curves to give it a dynamic look. Now I was finally ready to work on the material. It had to be a procedural material because the joint geometry nodes destroys the UV and a remesh modifier on top of that just left me with no room for any type of UV based texturing. I will make a detailed tutorial on how I made this material in the future. But just to give you some broad strokes, I connected a bunch of colors using a color ramp to the pointiness slot of the geometry info node. From there on, it was playing with the values and finding the right color for a creature that needed to look disgusting yet fascinating. Once I nailed down the colors I liked, I added glossiness and transparency to the skin and used a noise texture as a bump map with the strength dialed way down. Lastly, I did one round of post-processing in compositing tab and added sound effects to elevate the sliminess of the shot. I hope you all liked this breakdown. If you want to see something specific in detail, please feel free to let me know in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and subscribe for more content.